Hey guys, it's Steph. Today I'm going to talk about Alismatic Heroes. Oh, it's just, it's such a cool theme and a cool game, I couldn't not talk about it, you know? Alismatic Heroes is a game for three to five players and is a tactical war game with the theme of Alice in Wonderland. The dreams are fading and the queen of hearts needs to bring in Alice to rectify Wonderland and all of its glorious dreams. Now there's so many Alices coming into play with all these different themes and modernized ideas to try and take over the land of Wonderland and create their own empire. There's Deep One Alice, Gangster Alice, Hunter Alice, of course there is the original Alice as well. So all of these different cards you will be using to build your engine throughout the game and try and get the best empire for the end game victory. Each land tile will score victory points, some cards might score victory points, but ultimately, ultimately the player who has the most points will win the game. You start the game with two territories, kind of Catan style, you go and snake back, picking these territories. Some territories can have more than one player on it. These tiles were randomly put out at the beginning of the game and there's some more in the box for more players. This is set up for the three player game. I kind of have two characters on display right here. Um, players will be using cards from their hands to put into play and then placing a token on the board as part of their turns. It kind of happens in two phases. Um, it really reminds me of Deus with different hand management and a set number of turns. You will be playing 13 rounds, so to speak. You'll get rid of all of your 15 tokens, including the first two that are placed on the board. Once that is over, then everybody finishes their turn and then the game will end and everybody has even number of turns. So you start with the star player and move on. So in your initial hand, you get five cards. I'll just put these right over here. If you don't like your cards, you have an opportunity to discard at the beginning of the game. It's a one-time thing. So it's your chance to really pick out the cards you might want for later or start with. Um, my cards that I just drew are all zeros and ones, which are really good for the beginning of the game. So let me explain. When you play a card, you have to have enough dream power. The dream power is represented by the yellow. This little symbol is the four down here and then the two. So if there's a value in the top corner, zero, well, I can, I can play that card without any dream power because it's a zero dream power. Um, so the higher the number, this eight, that won't be able to be played for like until the end of the game, if it's going to be played at all. So that means it's probably a pretty good card. Um, when you play a card down, you immediately activate its benefit. So all of these cards have different powers and different, you know, happenings. Some of them will say, oh, when you claim a blue territory, gain a card. You know, different things that will happen upon when you do something on the board. So you might not always get it right away, but some of them might just say, you know, gain a green token. All right, I'll gain a green token. So each turn you'll be playing a card, either face up or face down as a commoner, like so. So you can't be totally shut out of an option. So you will be playing these cards and they add up. So I can only have a max four in each column. If I have four yellow, that means I have four yellow, I have four dream power. So I could then play a level four or fewer in any of the other columns in the color. So you have these different colors, red, yellow, green, blue, white, and there are no other colors but those. 
commoners can be played in any column. So that's nice. Um, if you really needed that red card and you don't have one, well, you can always play a commoner. And then you'll have that one, str one strength, in this case, red is military. And because you play a commoner card, you actually draw a card. If you play a card as a card, as an Alice card, you do not draw a card. You have to figure out other ways of drawing these cards replacement. Or you could play a commoner card and you'll always get a card in return for that. It's really tricky hand management. Like, super tricky. I love this. So, you know, I've only played this game once and I, I liked it so much where I wanted to talk about it more. Um, so, the blue stack is draw cards. So whenever I were to claim a blue territory, and I'll get to that in a little bit, I will get number of cards equal to how many blue cards I have on my display. So really important. But is it more important than dream power at the beginning of the game? It's hard to say because you need your dream power to get all of the other cards in play. Strength is critically important. Because wherever you start on the board, in order to take over any territory, you have to have the strength equal to that or, or better. So the zeros, of course, are all easy to do. You can just go there without having any strength. So that's generally how the game begins. Everybody will start branching out into the zeros on display. But as soon as you start building up your, your strength, you can go into different territories of greater value. If I were to go into it, if I had two cards face down, I'll use this as my example here. So if I had these two reds, um, or the purple player will have these two reds, they can go into any two or fewer on the board, and their, re and their benefit will be depending on what color it is. So if, if they were to move in, move into the white two area, well then you look at your white cards that you've collected, your white stack, which is not many at the moment. So let's say we had something like this, zero and then two, and I somehow got that four white into play. I have that one white card. White's benefit is simply victory points. You count up the number of cards you have in the white stack and you get that many victory points. So if purple went into the strength two white area, they would get one point for having one card. If they were to take over a blue region somewhere on the board like that, they would get one card draw because they have one card in their column. Green, green, yellow, and red are all a little different. They get you tokens based on the number of cards when you take over the region of that color. So provided you have the strength, you can go anywhere and the benefit will be depending on how many cards you have in your column on your tableau probably a whole bunch of commoners at first just to help build your empire and you know your resources different resources so the tokens are pretty straightforward if you collect red tokens you can simply add strength when you need it so if you need to take over the city capital and you need five strength well you can never have five cards unless you have a card that says otherwise but you would you could spend tokens to make up the difference. Um, so the red ones are additional strength. The yellow ones are additional dream power. So that's how you can possibly get this red eight into play. So let's see. I think I put it here. If I had enough dream power, I could just say, all right, I'm spending all my seven yellow tokens to put this eight red into play probably pretty good if you got it so you know all other players would be like really <laughs> so 
So these are all different cards and how the board is played out. I didn't get to green yet. So when you are on a tile, you can go to any adjacent when you're claiming territory on the single hex tile, even though they're kind of bubbly, but they're hexes. You can claim anything around it, provided you, you own the city. If I wanted to venture out onto a new tile, I would have to pay one food for each space I'm away from my capital, the closest capital. So I would have to pay two food for going there. Food is green. So I would look and say, all right, I have two green cards, so that, that negates. I don't have to pay anything. However, if I wanted to go even further to that city, I would, one, need five strength. Two, I would need to have three food. So I don't have three guys. I would have to spend these green tokens to make up for it. If you wanted to cross over t uh, enemy lands, you have to pay two food to cross over. You can't go through the dark forest. There's something special about that um, for later games when it's all surrounded. People can try and claim them later, but I won't get into that. However, if I were to claim the city, I'm then on that city so that I can start you know, building out from out there. At the end of the game, you get six points for being controlling the most for each tile and three points if you're second most. So you want to try and be all over the board. If you ever get disconnected and say, well, I don't want to go on my tile that I am. I'm just going to go, go off and do my own thing and pay my three food for going way over here. I can do that. I can simply go anywhere on the board that I want. I just have to pay the food to travel that far from my home city and if I cross over anybody I have to pay additional food so it can get really costly and the disadvantage of that is that okay now it's not connected to my city somebody else can come and take me over you know in my in my one game of this that didn't happen at all nobody ventured out nobody's an explorer like I, I was but nobody chose to fight me I, everybody was just building close to home and not really seeing the exploration of the board. I was trying to get everywhere because I wanted to get all the points for having the most of everywhere. You know, I wanted to be everywhere. What's cool about finding a city is that you also get six points right away. Yes, points are good. Points will win you the game. So you wanna do all of this while managing your hand and try not to run out of cards. I can't really, say how important cards are, but if you play five Alice's down, you have no more cards, you're kind of like, uh, okay. So I guess I would have to say, don't be out of cards. You can skip your turn to draw a single card. You're missing the placement phase, however. So it's kind of, you got to do what you got to do, of course. So Alice Matic, it's all about finding the best patterns and best combinations you can. It reminds me a lot of Deus, except you don't ever really get the extra cards that you will find in Deus, but you're building up these different powers and getting be more benefits as the game goes on. You'll find a lot of these Alice's besides being adorably amazingly cute do awesome things the lower they are the not as great value you might get from it some of them have a lot of end game scoring so you want to look for that um i want to read with this this eight red card demon lord alice oh my god you can capture other players territories even if they connect to cities what oh my god that's pretty awesome <laughs> see i didn't even know i haven't seen half of these cards so that is a crazy good card oh man i guess this game could be kind of mean it is a tactical war game after all so that's pretty much the game i played it with four players and it, it works really well um five players you add extra well four and five players you add extra tiles which is nice 
makes the game, you know, bigger and more spacious. Um, anyway, I can't wait to play this again. So, I, you know, I, I gave you the rundown of this game. I just want to give you a few thoughts I've been having. So, I don't want to always do videos for uncommon games. I don't know how hard this game will be to get, and I feel bad. It's, just, it's awesome, so I wanted to talk about it. Um, if you have any ideas on games you'd want to see me do videos for, I'm happy to take those into consideration. I, I'm kind of like, okay, well, everybody does Karuba. Everybody does Katan. You know, I since I have access to these cool Japanese and Taiwanese games, I, I've been trying to say, okay, maybe I'll try and do some more in that area because it doesn't get a whole lot of spotlight. And it's just so cool to see all these different artworks for these different games and, you know, so hopefully you find these videos cool like I do. Um, it just makes me sad that I can't just like hand you the game too to play with me because I want to play these games with everybody and and share the love of this production. So, you know, these little tokens here, I just, um, I think I'm gonna have to upgrade them. They get kinda lost in the tiles, so I'm gonna have to get little tokens for them. Um, that's my only thing about this game, is that you can't really see the tokens. They're there, but uh, they get kinda lost. So, I need something that stands up. Maybe like the Deus Minis, or something to just show that you have control of the land. Um, so that that's my thought on this game. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I can't wait to play it again. Um, so hopefully tomorrow, <laughs> you know, you know, there's always another day. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching!